I'm Angela and this is my sustainability journey. There's a few experiments I want to try and some things that I've already had a go at. I hope you enjoy. I made a wool jumper at the end of last year, 100% wool. Um, I bought the, the wool new. Um, it's quite expensive but I'm hoping it will last basically for the rest of my life. Um, as best I can because you can I'll repair it as well. I've got some colour that wool left. And with the leftovers I've made some fingerless mitts, which I have actually tried. I slept with them on um, an all-night camp, actually, it just so happens, a wild camp. And this is how they fit, lovely and warm, gives you plenty of space to do things with your fingers. Very simply, simple to make, quite a nice pattern on the back, it's cable design. You could probably do them plain and adapt the pattern if you needed to. So I've made those. Same type of wool. And it's from um, Yorkshire. It's from Yorkshire Blue Face Sheep. And I can't remember what the name of the company is. Yorkshire Wool, I think. It's wool from Yorkshire. Um, but this, I've made a hat. I have a free pattern from a magazine. Um, I've made it black one side. I've knitted two hats and sewed them together. So because they're 100% they're wool, they'll be extra warm. And this is the other side, inside out hat. I like the flaps, keep your ears warm, fits quite nicely. You can also tie it here if you need to. The black that was left over from turning the hat inside out. I also use the leftovers on the gloves as well, that's why they're black and green. They sort of, it sort of matches I guess with the black hat, not so much with the blue. But always get the best you can afford and make things last as long as possible. To me that's part of being sustainable, so you haven't got to keep buying things that you don't need. That's why I bought it new to start with, hoping to get all the wear that I could out of it. Well, I grow lots of lavender on my allotment. There's actually three lavender bushes. Um, I think they might be a mixture of lavender types. I know one of them at least, I think two of them, are um, English lavender. I've actually dried them here, it's very, very strong smelling. Um, I put them in a pillowcase to help keep it dry. That's the dried lavender there. Look. You can see it's very dry now. Ideal. It really has a strong scent. Um, in the past, I've made some lavender oil with it. This is lavender oil made. This is, I've had it for probably about three or four years. And this is from cooking oil. And this one was some olive oil. The olive oil was nearly empty because I used it when I made some soap. Um, so far, with the lavender oil, I've used it in soap, and I have heard actually it's useful for attracting bees. So I might actually try to put that up near my shed and allotment, just so the bees are pleasant and come pollinate my crops. Right, from the dried lavender, I've also made some lavender bags. This one, I made a little lavender bag, and I made, I just was playing around really. I made some nice lacy gloves. I was hoping to give it as a present for somebody. Look, see lacy gloves and a nice little lavender bag. All made out of a pair of pants. <laughs> Here is a pair of pants. As you can see, they're not actually a very good fit here. Hence I Massive made pants. <laughs> That's why I made them into something else. Beautiful, sexy pants, a lovely, soft, silky fabric, but unfortunately not very comfortable. Hence the gloves, sexy gloves, you know, and a lavender bag I've made out of another pair. This is a different colour, sexy pants, pink one that I've made lavender bag out. The little net lets all the scent of the lavender come out. So, and the these little ribbons at the top, these are the things that um, women's clothes tend to get inside. They tend to have lit ribbons stick out to put them on coat hangers. So because they're annoying and they show, I cut them off and I save all the bits of ribbon and that's what these bits of ribbon are. Also recently, from scraps of yarn, I've made two little lavender dollies, little twins there, out of knitted odds and ends. There's a bit of ribbon from a, um, a parcel I got at Christmas. Um, various odds and ends of wool and embroidery things I've got on the front. They both hang up in your wardrobe or you put them in with your towels and the linen cupboard or anywhere really where you don't really want moths to go. 
Or, I guess, if you want to attract bees, so I've learned recently. A YouTube friend of mine, Rob. I've had odds and ends of bits of candle that have been given to me lying around the house. I had a really nice Yankee candle which smells gorgeous, but it was inside a glass jar and it got so low where we'd almost used it up that you couldn't actually light it very easy. So I melted the candle wax, poured it into what well, is actually a small tuna tin, um, so it'd be easy to light and it's still quite safe because it's quite a strong tin and it smells nice so that actually stays in our bathroom as an air freshener as well. Along with um, the candle thing, this is actually an ordinary white, very cheap basic household candle. I've melted one candle in there, this is an old tuna tin, coiled up a piece of corrugated cardboard and that actually makes it a nice little emergency mini fire, it's good to start a uh, fire starter. So you can light that and then you build up a fire around it. So it's quite good as like a little emergency fire starter. You can also use it as a little fire, put a little tripod over the top. Maybe put two bricks up vertically each side, put a pan over the top, because you can actually cook on it. It's, it's hot enough to warm a tin of baked beans. Um, I'm not sure about it boiling a kettle, but you can give it a try and see. Let me know how you get on below. I call it a buddy burner. I don't actually know if it's officially called that, but I know it's been made before. Um, so I know it's a recognised thing. But I had a, a candle and a tuna tin, so I thought I'd give it a go. I'm also going to have a go at making soap from scratch. I've actually made some soap from some soap-based material with a bit of lavender oil in, and it worked quite well, but it's making soap from soap. This time I actually want to make real soap. This is pine tar that we've collected. It was a bit of a job recognising it, because it looks like the bark. So we got a little bit from various pine trees. Look, it's basically a pine tree scab. And you're picking the scab off and collecting the scabby bits. So this melts under quite high heat. I haven't tried it yet. I'm very much a pre-experiment stage. We've collected the pine tar. I want to make some wood ash out of hardwood. I've got the wood. It's a bit tricky being allowed to have a bonfire at the moment because of Covid times and we've got lots of rules and things in our area about doing a bonfire but I've got a little bit of wood ready, ready to make some wood ash and that makes a lie to go with the pine tar to make the soap. It smells... Oh my god, I've got to smell it now. Ooh, smells... It smells a bit like pine cleaning fluid but a little bit like a man's aftershave base, you know, it's like, oh, it smells lovely. Anyway, because that really nice smell, I'm going to have a go at making pine tar soap, and I'll let you know how it gets on. <laughs> well, I hope that's given you a few ideas. Have a go. Let me know in the comments about various things you make, especially if you find out something interesting to make with lavender or lavender oil. I'd love to know. Um, hope you comment and subscribe. Keep watching, I'm going to be doing an upcoming video on how to make an, a puppet show and also we're going to have a go at making, repairing a shed roof out of beer cans and tin cans, aluminium cans. So keep watching and thanks. <laughs>